Welcome to Theory Hubs. Today's scary stories will be focused on urban exploring and forgotten abandoned places. Thank you for clicking on my video, and please give me advice in the comments on how I can make these videos even scarier for you. Story 2. The Mental Hospital's Crawl Space. I've been trying to forget this night, but it keeps haunting me. I need to get it out. And maybe it'll serve as a warning to anyone who thinks urban exploring is always fun in games. My friend Jake and I run a small vlog where we explore abandoned places. We've seen some pretty creepy stuff, but nothing compares to what happened in that canyon in Utah. We'd heard rumors about an old house tucked away in a remote canyon, a place that supposedly used to be a mental hospital. The idea of exploring it was too tempting to resist, so we packed our gear and headed out, excited to get some great footage for our channel. The drive was long, and the canyon was more isolated than we expected. As we approached the house, the sun was starting to set, casting long shadows over the decrepit building. It looked like it had been abandoned for decades, its windows shattered and the paint peeling off in large chunks. The air was thick with an unsettling quiet. We started filming, narrating our approach and giving a brief history of the place. Inside, the house was a mess of debris, old furniture, and graffiti. There were no signs of recent activity, just the decaying remnants of its past life. As we explored, we found old patient records, rusted medical equipment, and faded photographs of the people who had once been confined there. The deeper we went, the more oppressive the atmosphere became. It was as if the walls themselves were watching us, bearing silent witness to the horrors that had unfolded within them. Finally, in the basement, we discovered a small door leading to a crawl space. It was narrow and dark, the kind of place you wouldn't want to go into without a very good reason. Naturally, we decided to check it out. Inside the crawl space, we found a disturbing array of restraints, chains, and old bloodstained mattresses. It was clear this had been used to contain patients in the most brutal way possible. We started filming, documenting everything, when suddenly, the crawlspace door slammed shut behind us with a deafening bang. Panic set in immediately. We rushed to the door, but it wouldn't budge. From above, we could hear someone moving around, the sound of heavy footsteps echoing through the confined space. Then, the thudding started. Someone was jumping on the door, trying to trap us inside. We screamed and pounded on the door, but the man on the other side just laughed. His voice was gruff and filled with a manic edge. Why are you here? He yelled. This is my property. You have no right to be here. We tried to reason with him, explaining that we were just exploring and meant no harm, but he wasn't listening. You want to see the inside? You want to see what it was like? He taunted. You'll stay in there, just like we did. There's only one way out. Our blood ran cold as we heard him dragging something heavy across the floor. The sound of chains and metal scraping against the concrete above us sent chills down our spines. You like the restraints? He continued, his voice dripping with menace. They used to tie me up in there. Now it's your turn. He kept us trapped, teasing us with deranged comments and laughter. You think you can just come in here and fill my home? You think you can just leave? You have no idea what they did to us, what they did to me. His voice would rise and fall in a sing-song cadence, full of madness and rage. The night was freezing, the concrete floor leeching the warmth from our bodies. We huddled together for warmth, listening to the man's ranting and the occasional dragging sound above. Sleep was impossible. Every noise made us jump, expecting him to come down and do something worse. At some point during the night, the man started whispering through the door. Do you know what it's like to be forgotten? To be locked away and left to rot? They said I was crazy, but I'm not. I'm not. You're the crazy ones, coming here, disturbing my peace. Maybe I should show you what they did to me. His whispers turned into a low, guttural chanting. I couldn't understand the words, but the sound filled me with a dread I can't describe. It was like he was calling something, summoning an old, dark force. I swear the air grew colder, and the darkness seemed to press in on us from all sides. Finally, around 
6 a.m., we noticed it had gone silent. We waited a few more minutes, then decided to try the door again. With a combined effort, we managed to push it open. The man was gone, but he had left his mark. The heavy chains and metal objects he had piled on the door as a final attempt to keep us trapped. We didn't stick around to find out where he had gone. We grabbed our gear and ran, not stopping until we reached our car. As we sped away, we vowed never to return to that place and to be more cautious in the future. The experience left us shaken, and the memory of that man's crazed eyes and haunting words will stay with us forever. I have a story for you theory hubs. I've been sitting on this for a while trying to convince myself it was just a nightmare or some kind of twisted hallucination. But it happened, and I need to get it out there. If nothing else, maybe it'll serve as a warning to anyone who thinks urban exploring is always fun and games. Back in 2015, I was traveling through Japan, exploring all the typical tourist spots. But I also had a passion for urban exploring, particularly abandoned places. I'd read online about an old knockoff Disneyland type theme park that went bankrupt in the 90s. It was supposed to be a paradise for urban explorers, creepy, decaying, and entirely deserted. I couldn't resist. I won't say exactly where it is, because I don't want anyone else trying to find it. Trust me, you don't want to go there. Anyway, I arrived at the park late in the afternoon planning to get some epic sunset shots. The place was just as eerie as I'd imagined. Rusted rides, overgrown paths, and buildings crumbling from years of neglect. The air was thick with decay, and an unsettling silence hung over everything. I started with the smaller rides, getting some decent shots. But I had my eye on the massive roller coaster at the park's center. It was the park's main attraction back in its heyday, and it was huge perfect for a dramatic photo op. But as I made my way there, I got the feeling I wasn't alone. I kept seeing flashes of movement out of the corner of my eye. At first, I thought it was just animals or maybe another explorer, but when I looked closer, there was nothing. The feeling of being watched grew stronger, and I couldn't shake the sense of unease. About an hour in, I saw him, an older Asian man standing in the shadows near one of the food stalls. He didn't move or say anything, just stood there watching me. I tried to ignore him, chalking it up to paranoia. But as I continued exploring, I kept spotting him, always at a distance, always watching. My heart was racing, and I started to panic. What if he called the police? I didn't speak Japanese, and the last thing I wanted was to get arrested in a foreign country for trespassing. I decided to wrap things up quickly and head out, but not before getting my shot from the top of the roller coaster. I made my way to the coaster and began to climb. It was a nerve-wracking ascent, the old structure creaking and groaning under my weight. By the time I reached the highest point, the sun was setting, casting a blood-red glow over the abandoned park. It was beautiful and terrifying all at once. I snapped a few pictures, my heart pounding in my chest. Just as I was about to start my descent, I heard footsteps on the metal stairs below me. I looked down and saw the man climbing up towards me, a look of grim determination on his face. Panic set in. I was trapped at the top of the coaster with nowhere to go. The man reached the top, and for a moment, we just stared at each other. Then he moved to a control panel I hadn't noticed before. He pulled a lever, and the entire structure shuddered to life. The sound of the roller coaster roaring to life was deafening. I realized with horror that he was sending a car hurtling towards me. I scrambled, desperately trying to find a way to escape. The car came into view, moving at breakneck speed, and I knew I had only seconds. In a blind panic, I jumped, aiming for a nearby support beam. I missed, falling and hitting a series of beams on my way down. The pain was excruciating, and I blacked out before I hit the ground. I woke up hours later, somehow alive but in agony. The man was gone, and the park was silent once more. I managed to drag myself out of there and find help. I didn't tell the locals what really happened, just that I fell while hiking. They wouldn't have believed the truth. I made it back to the States, but I've never been the same. I still have nightmares about that man. 
his cold eyes staring at me as the roller coaster bore down on me. Urban exploring lost its thrill after that. Now, it's just a reminder of how close I came to dying in that cursed, forgotten park. If you're reading this and thinking about exploring abandoned places, please be careful. Some places are abandoned for a reason, and some people will go to terrifying lengths to keep their secrets buried.